Welcome. My name is Kelly Bearden. I'm a classical musician turned creative entrepreneur, and this is the best platform for musicians that are looking to shape their career by thinking outside the box. Claire, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast today and to be finally having this conversation in person and not just on Instagram. Um, I know we'll get to all your content creation, all the amazing things that you do on socials, but I want to start way back at the very beginning. When did you first start singing? Wow. Okay. So I'm almost 34 now, but I started when I was <laughs> 15, which actually a lot oh of goodness. people think are late, is late, but yeah. it's not. It's actually surprisingly not. And um, I was very shy as a kid and I discovered theater when I was 14, 15 and I loved it. And I helped, I mean, as a little, little kid, of course, I loved dancing and performing and then I was bullied a lot. And so I, Hmm. who knows, I think my shyness developed through bullying, but who I really am is I love to perform. And so I got back into that with the teacher who was randomly teaching in our house (laughs) <laughs> and he gave us free lessons because we had this beautiful house with tall ceilings and a beautiful mm. grand piano that my dad had. And he's like, and we, we, were, we were artists and he needed a place to teach his lessons. And so this guy gave us free lessons and I was very shy and I was kind of snooping around the corner, listening to all the lessons that he was having with his students. And I was like, and I'd be making a sandwich after school and just, like, <laughs> taking a long time to make the sandwich in the kitchen and listen. And one day he's like, Claire, you want to come and have a lesson? I was like, Oh my God. And then I did. And I don't remember being pitchy. I was just nervous, but then I started having fun. But apparently I was very, very, very mm. pitchy for many, many months. And my mom even took him aside and was worried and was like, is this like going to, she going to grow out of this? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And as a kid, I had ear infections. So we thought I had maybe mm. hearing loss, but I grew out of it and I actually learned a a way of singing, of feeling the vibrations bounce off my body, which is like bat sonar. And most people don't learn that, but I had to. And that turned Mm. into the way that I teach today, which is a way more effective approach to singing, in my opinion, because the ears are never reliable, period. But I had to learn that way. So it was a blessing. That is Um, so cool. And especially since I, I think a lot of students, and I'm sure a lot of teachers resonate with this we see everything. <laughs> we hear everything <laughs> and we see students of all different natural talents and ability levels. Yeah. And it, it, it's hard because I think a lot of, at first glance, it would be easy for a lot of us to just dismiss a student that doesn't have, you know, that natural born initial talent presentation at first, especially in voice. But this method that you developed born from your own struggles Um, it it sounds like it speaks to a lot of students and works for a lot of students, not just the students that come to you with a little bit of talent already. It does. I mean, the irony is I'm so sensitive to that because it was me and I was, it never came naturally to me at first. I was Mm -hmm. an athlete and I worked hard and I also had major ADD as a kid. And I'm not someone who lightly throws away around that term. I like really, really had it. And it's actually a great thing. It's neurodivergence and it's it's in a lot of artists. It's actually a gift if you learn to harness it. But I was one of those dreamy, quiet girls in the back of the classroom. Nobody would notice, but I wasn't paying attention and I wasn't doing well in school. And I I, I would get straight A's, but I would just have to kill myself to do it. And I would take five hours to read 20 pages. And so I was very... um, um, let's see. Oh, sorry. What was the question again? Look at that. <laughs> oh, right. It You're gave totally me fine. patience. It gave me patience. So my brain, and you will see part of my gift is seeing so much all at the same time, but then, right. And that is I my gift. It. And in school, it doesn't really set you up to uh, mm. acknowledge that as a gift. And so, um, I have that extreme compassion and sensitivity about that to others and to feel like you're very slow at your process. Mm. And I'm someone who is very slow at most things at first, but once I learn it, I'm actually faster than most people and I become a master. So it's like, I'm very sensitive to people feeling like they're not good enough and worrying that, you know, just they're failing and just all those things. Cause I've just, I've been there. If you think you've been there, I've been there. And so mm. um, I'm very sensitive to that and how, confidence and self-worth is a key factor in learning anything. Um, and so, yeah, I, yeah, I believe it's given me that perspective and that gentle compassion and that safe space. I create people for people. 
That's awesome. And I'm sure students come to you for that. I know you work with a lot of professionals, which we're going to get to in a second too. You have a lot of very like high powered, high success students that you work with, but also allowing people that freedom and and creating that environment is such a cool spot for people who maybe don't have huge career aspirations, but are just looking to improve that part of themselves. Completely. Cycling back to the lessons in your house though. I've, I'm (laughs) curious. So how did that come to be? I know you said you had an artistic family. Were your parents also musicians? Yes. Well, not professionally, but my mom was, you know, a poet, like, you know, a very non, a non-professional, but very good non-professional poet, like just really good. She even had this calendar in Seattle published. She, when I was, she was pregnant with me and one of her poems was entered and got part of a calendar and it's framed in our, Oh my gosh. Yeah. So like, that was a big deal for like, you know, our area in Seattle. So she's just very good. And she thinks in metaphor. So therefore I think in metaphor and I teach in metaphor and I see the big picture and I see how it's all related to everything. The way you sing is the way you experience your life. The way you have your thoughts is the way you sing. Mm. So that way of being in the world has stuck with me with having a mother who's very poetic. And my dad was a non-professional, but pretty good non-professional piano player. And Got it. He was always playing, you know, all the pieces, Rachmaninoff, Bach. And so I grew up with NPR and jazz and my dad playing. So I did not grow up with pop or country or anything, which is ironic. And we'll we can get into that later if you want, because musical theater came later. But all the stuff you hear on the radio now or pop or anything, that was not in our house. <laughs> so I, I don't even know how this happened. <laughs> I know, when you look at your Instagram or your TikTok, you would never guess that because that's definitely what your students focus on yeah, so much. We had like so three funny. channels. My sister ended up on Disney Channel. My sister's Dove Cameron. And so she was a Disney star before she became a VMA and AMA musical sensation. And so <laughs> we didn't even have Disney Channel. So I don't even know how this happened with us. <laughs> it's like oh so random. <laughs> that's awesome. Now, the yeah. lessons that are happening in your house as you're listening – were you at the at this stage in your life, were you thinking like, I might want to be a singer? I might want to learn more about this or just like, this is interesting and cool and I'm listening because I'm, I'm fascinated, but that could never be me. Like, I, I don't want to yeah. go down that path. I think I felt like I was supposed to have those thoughts because we're taught like this false mm. modesty of like, oh, I could never. And so, but deep down I did want it. And as a little, little kid, I was like three, four, five, I would be belting out ballads of JC, Jesus Christ Superstar in the, in the, in the aisles of the grocery store. I'd be like, oh, see my eyes, I can hardly see, see my skin, I'm a mess of blood. And my mom would be like, oh my God, I'm not abusing this child. And so oh, I'd be like, oh, I don't believe And they're like, everyone's like, Jesus. I'm like, you know, Jesus. And so, oh my gosh. So I that loved awesome. it, but that was covered up for many years under all the bullying I had. Mm. Between men. And so then when I found it, it was like I found my voice again. And it was like, I would love this. And I don't know if I, I didn't think at first I'd love a career. It was more like, I just want to be seen. And I yeah. think that's what most people who come to me who aren't in the industry, they say, I mean, in a way, most people just want fame. And mm. I, this is not to be, this is not being, what's the word? Uh, uh, cynical. I think a lot of people who come, they, they say, I want a career, but I'm like, why? And they're like, well, and it all comes down to, I just want to be known. I just want to be noticed. Mm. And that way, sometimes I tell them, but sometimes I don't, it's like, well, maybe you do want a career, but also if you don't, that's not, that's not the right career for you. Cause right. I wanted to be seen too, but I had just enough talent. I was on my way to going to New York and I could have, I was going to like have this professional career in opera or Broadway. And like, it was like, why am I doing this? I'm, a, I'm such an introvert. I don't actually really enjoy the lifestyle. I love the art. <laughs> it's different. Right. You want to be on tour all the time. And even when you're successful yeah. and you've made it, you're struggling financially. Even when you're signing autographs, it's like it, that life doesn't work. And it's like, right. I don't like it. And I don't like all the schmoozing. <laughs> so it's like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? So, yeah, um, yeah I, I do believe that I wanted it or I thought I wanted it. But deep down, I think I just wanted to be seen because I hadn't felt seen in so long. And mm. after working so hard, like I, I did those exercises every day that he taught me. I was diligent. I saw results. I believe that if you, you know, everyone's different. You can't promise results to someone, but I've seen people transform when they put in the work. When you do it, I was seeing results and it was like, oh my God. And people were praising me. And I was like, it was just so nice to have a passion, to have something to focus mm. on that I was special at. And I believe that we as humans are just meant to sing and act and perform because we're meant to, we're born storytellers. So whenever someone says, I've been doing this since I was three, doesn't really phase me. 
not in a, in, in a really kind way. It's just like, that's yeah. nice. But what else do you really want the business? Cause mm. everybody has been doing this since they were three. We all love this. Right. So it's, yeah, it's caused me through time to realize the deep reason why I think we all love performing, which doesn't mm. have to be about the career itself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's something that, you know, the passion that we have for music or for the arts and for creating something and sharing it with the world, it is a double-edged sword. And, you know, at any, any level of success, even if we're talking about you know, the, the top of the top and someone that is super, super famous versus someone who's just creating locally, it's something that you're creating for yourself and it's therapeutic yeah. and we get all this emotional release from this. And at the same time, you're creating publicly. So what you're doing is also open to other people's emotions and feedback and scrutiny. And it is something that now you're behold tied to the audience outcome and their feelings too, a little bit. So it comes with a lot of benefits and a lot of cons. And then when we talk about like going to school and pursuing music long-term it can take the passion out of that for a lot of people. So it's it's one thing to have the passion and it's another thing to want all of the other stuff, like you're saying, which is exactly what we're here today to talk about all that other stuff that comes with it. So you get through high school, you're performing and thinking a lot in high school, if I'm correct. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I was. I was finding myself again, as in when you mm. say finding, it sounds so dramatic, but really it's just uncovering who you are, which is meant to be this beautiful being of light who's expressed. In high school, I really was performing a lot and I was discovering myself. And when I say that, I really think, because I think so many people, why they think they want to go into theater and acting is maybe it is the right reason. I actually really feel like it's 5% of the people who, who really do it is the right reason. And it, mm. I mean, is because they really want the business. I think most of us, and that was me, it's more of just in high school, I felt like I myself was coming back, but really that's just my most expressed authentic self. And I got to be me on stage. And I think in society, we're not really such a victim way to say we're not allowed. I mean, it just feels <laughs> like we're not really allowed to be our full authentic selves. Yes. Unless, especially I think in American culture, Love America. Mm -hmm. I'm actually moving to Portugal soon, I think. But I just, it's oh. not the culture for me. Oh yeah. It's not. And for some people it is, but for me, it's not in the way that I like to express myself. And I feel that it's like we discover being on a stage, we get to play whatever character we want. And it's like, you know, whoever the, ma the mask I put on, I get to be me. When really those are all just facets of you. So if that's all that it takes, you want to just become an express person. You don't really necessarily want the career. <laughs> But yeah. that was the gift it gave me. And I still, I need to get back to acting. Like I love acting. I love creativity. I think it's the most, I feel blocked when I don't regularly create art. I think we're just meant to do that. So I think that's what is beautiful about all of it. So I, you find more of a whole sense of self hmm. when you're doing that. Life is dry yeah. when you're just doing taxes and work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Tis the season. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So is you're getting through high school and you, you, you're you coming into yourself and you're finding this part of yourself again and you're feeling more authentic and connected. Yeah. You did not initially pursue music and theater when you went to school and that took you a lot of different places. So for those who don't know your full story, give a quick yeah. overview of what happened after high school because yeah. there was a lot. <laughs> yes. Well, one thing it's little known, it's not really that important, but I quickly did pursue it right away. I went one semester when I was 18 at Emerson College in Boston, mm -hmm. and then I quickly re realized that wasn't the right place for me. It's a great school, but it was literally just like 40000 a year to just like – it's just so much money and, and it's just, it just, it's nuts to be studying theater. It's just, it's college and it's just yeah. the school system. So I left and I also just wasn't in a good headspace. I was in a deep depression and I just, I want to go home. I miss my family. So I did, I stayed home for a year and then I went to New York. Um, I got accepted into this really cool acting school called the Atlantic acting school. I stayed for a semester, but I, again, I was struggling. I was actually in a very deep depression for several years and um, we can discuss that later if you want. It was actually ha to do with different factors, um, including a health thing I didn't know I had, which was in my mm. gut that I probably got from, you know, going to India a lot as a kid. So, um, so when I was 21, I came back from New York, didn't know what to do with my life. And then I decided, I saw the movie Eat, Pray, Love, and I decided I'm going to go to Bali. <laughs> and I <laughs> was a kid going to India and my, I feel the most at home, like in Hindu culture. And, um, we have a lot of, you know, around the house, we had a lot of jazz and music, but we also had a lot of Indian decor. It's a very eclectic childhood. <laughs> so, um, 
So I decided to, I got a certificate in teaching English and I taught English there for six months. Um, and my dad died and I had to come back. And then, um, I finished, I went to a community college to go back to school for a little bit. Cause we, our family, um, we lost m- all our money and it was a very hard time. It was right after 2008, several years after, and it's just, we lost everything. And, um, it was hard cause I grew up, you know, very basic middle class. Like we weren't rich, but I had everything I ever needed. And suddenly we literally had nothing and mm. it was hard. And my mom and sister had just moved to LA and yeah, our house, we, we literally lost the house to the bank because of, um, to us, the crash and our dogs, we lost, it was just, everything was lost overnight. Mm. And, um, yeah, it makes me emotional still. Cause it's just like, it's, it's hard. A lot. It changed makes- so fast. I'm so sorry. Oh no, it's okay. No, it's, I'm also just an emotional person. So there's nothing wrong with me. Don't worry. I'm, I like all to good. share. All good. Yeah. I like to share. And I really appreciate it. Cause this is, I mean, again, this is all part of this journey that yeah. you, know, you see the success at the end and all of this stuff almost gets lost underneath that. So I really it appreciate does. you wanting to share this. No, of course I do. Cause so much of social media is about having like this perfect life. And I think on my channel, which we can talk about later as well, it's like, I struggled with a really big health issue for many years that was clouding my brain and I could not function. Mm. I also didn't know that I had a ADD and I mean, a kind of ADD that I just couldn't function. So I, to get through it, I had to be like, hi. And I created this big positive person. Cause I, I just needed to, I couldn't function. I didn't want to drag people down. Mm. And so it is me, the person I've created on social media, but it's also, I'm working on finding a more authentic middle ground because I created that way of being at a time when I was very sick um, Mm -hmm. with my gut. And uh, yeah, so, but that's just to say, I never want to give the illusion of social media like my life's perfect because a lot of people somehow think that mine is, which I understand because I make it look like it is, but um, it's not. And our family's gone through a lot. Our dad died and it was a very sudden, horrible way. And it was just very... And then my sister became so famous. So much has changed. And it sounds, um, we're still very privileged. I mean, but at the same time, we lost everything. And I had no, um, definitely no hand-me-ups. Like, Mm. I did everything myself. I worked from the bottom. And I went back to school, um, worked really hard, graduated. I thought I, I studied anthropology, actually. But along the sides, along that time I was studying privately with other teachers. Cause I actually don't believe that you have to go to school for it. Actually, some of the best teachers never went to school. Yes. And some of the teachers I that never really would agree with at all, who aren't that great at teaching, they've been to school and they know all the terms, but they're not, yeah. they're, they're educated, but they're not intelligent. There's a difference. They don't have the gift. And I don't know if you can have the gift or not, but school to me is not always the answer. And so mm-hmm. I was studying that on the side but I also study anthropology and I love that. And then in 2016, when I graduated five years later, I was 27. Um, I was like, crap, what do I do with my life? And my mom's like, well, don't really, can't really do anything with your degree. I was like, yeah, crap. And it's like, well, she's like, you can teach singing. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how to teach. Like I wouldn't be a good teacher. And she's like, well, it's the only thing you got. I'm like, all right, crap. It's the only thing I got. So I just studied and I she went thinks, on YouTube. Mom, it's the only, it's, this is really, wonderful talent. It's the only thing I've got. I know. I, was like, I could go for it as a career, but that's like, oh, you're so even funny. if you succeed, that's no money for years. So yeah, oh, I did it. It is. That's amazing. And so you started teaching privately around this time. And obviously right now your studio is like you said, it's global. I mean, you're working with students all over the place and a lot of it online, but did you initially start online or were you taking local students at the beginning? Um, I was offering online and I did, it was just very, very slow. So I remember being being in college the semester before graduation, I knew I was going to try and do this as a career. So I offered lots of free lessons to students just to like see and test if I was even good. And I just, I I was not that great at all. Like we all start, we all start not good at anything we start. Yep. And that's just like, you have to be willing to look to to kind of suck for a while and to look bad. And I did not um, know how to teach at all. And it's a whole different art form. So I did. And then I just kept persevering. And my mom, my sister was on like season one or two of Live and Maddie, which is a Disney channel show, which actually Mm -hmm. got her an Emmy. And it was very cool, but it was a big show at the time. 
So it was the beginning and she had a little bit of a fat following. So she made a post on Instagram, like my sister's, you know, teaching, hey, and I got a few people who are interested. Nice. That's the only post yeah. she's made since then. Cause she also just wants to protect me because, you know, she gets stalkers and stuff. That's the only yeah. post she's ever made um, for that. But then my mom told a few of her friends and it was very slow. <laughs> and I literally <laughs> had to make students at first for a while. And one girl in Switzerland who I loved. And then it was just oh, like, cool. Yeah. And it slowly grew. Slowly grew. That's and then, awesome. you know, and as my sister, I was lucky. You can say, yeah, she had connections. I did, but you, the way the connections work is my sister slowly got connections with big, some of the biggest agents and managers in Hollywood. But the thing is, if you meet them, you get one chance and they would send a couple mm -hmm. people to me and they would come back with glowing reviews and send more to me. So I had to prove myself every time through that door, you just get one chance. And I proved myself and I worked hard and um, then words started to grow, but I have no idea how this, it just unfolded all these years. Like, I don't even know how this all <laughs> started. It's just, woo, and now it's huge. <laughs> I'm so lucky. Well, and okay, lucky, yes, but also you do still put a ton of work in. I, I oh. kind of joked before we started recording, I see Claire's face on my Instagram feed almost daily <laughs> because you put out so much content and so much high quality content, um, not only around Thank voice you. instruction, but also like some really great reaction videos. You do such a good job of adding a lot of, uh, a, a lot of content and information to that and value Thank to that you. so that when someone watches your videos, they're getting a lot of information all the time. Thank Funny you. story. And I kind of joked with Claire this about this right before we hit record. I did not know that her sister had any degree of fame before this conversation. I had to like look up and I am embarrassed to, to look up who Dove Cameron was, but um, it, it's a really amazing process to see that you've built this personal brand for yourself around your voice instruction, your voice coaching from something that you weren't even sure you were going to be good at a few years ago. So in the last few years, as you've grown, not only the personal brand in your social media, but as you've grown your teaching skills, where are some places that you've invested time, energy, effort, and, and really built this set of tools that you have for your teaching to continue to improve? Um, you mean, what are the tools that I've been using the most? Yeah. Or like, how have you found education around that or any resources that have helped you? Oh, grow as a teacher? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I mean, okay, this is the funny thing. Truthfully, if you want to know how I started. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> the, the, thing, the thing with teaching singing is it's not, there's resources everywhere. And I started with YouTube. I was like, crap, I, I knew singing. I'd been studying it for years, but I didn't know how to teach it. So I looked online mm -hmm. and I looked at teachers who were teaching and I saw how they were teaching. And some of them I agreed with and some I didn't, but the ones I resonated with, I was like, okay, how are they trying to convey that to their student? Because teaching is a whole different animal, as I'm sure your listeners know. Yes. And so I would observe and I would even, if, if they said a certain phrase or a phrase I liked, I would incorporate it. And at first I was like, mm -hmm. and it's like, no, I'm not. You are, they're learning what their teachers taught them and singing. We're all learning from each other. And we're building this beautiful, I believe, something I don't believe in is just studying what was taught 200 years ago and that's it. And I was taught that, we're sticking with that. I'm like, nope, I'm just a natural pioneer. So I'm like, teach me everything that was before. Got it. Oh, but I'm also feeling, what's this? And it's like, well, that that's not on the menu. It's like, well, I don't care. I'm, this works. It's like, mm. <laughs> and I've been getting some pushback in the past with people mm. who have very traditional backgrounds of this is how it's supposed to be. And then others are like, holy crap, this is huge. We only know this much about the voice still, right. just a tip. And so I love exploring all these different teachers and I've exposed myself to them and what works live in person or on YouTube. And I just keep adding. And in the meantime, I also became an NL NLP coach, which is neuro-linguistic programming, which is literally helping people rewire their brains for success. And so I'm very much into that and the neuroscience behind confidence. And so what I'm known for in the industry is having top techniques, number one, just that work and that can just right away give like, depends on the person, but sometimes like a nerd, like a, like a surgeon, like a surgical mm -hmm. striker in and out, it's there, especially if they've been doing it for years and we're in the studio and I just say one thing, it, it can save thousands of dollars, right? In the recording room. Um, but also sometimes I see that it's a mindset thing that they need and that's what makes me that's where I stand out in the industry. So I really want to tell your listeners to never feel like you have to stay with within the realm of this is what's taught. This is what works. Mm. Yes. Respect it, learn, but then 
we're always expanding. We're always growing. And that's, it, you, it, it's a choice. You can be a leader, a pioneer, or stay in a place that's already established, neither good nor bad. But if you want to, if you're feeling like you want to expand, you can. And look at me as an example. A lot of people like, what are you doing? It's like, I don't even know. And it just works. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, and it's, it's hard too, because I think when you are starting out in your career and you're trying to build this success for yourself, it's really easy to just do what everyone else has done or just yeah. follow like the the path we're supposed to be on. Like, you know, you finish school and you're supposed to take out orchestral auditions or you're supposed to take auditions for performances and, you know, fly out to New York and pay all this money to go take a bunch of auditions. And, you know, when I was in grad school myself, I realized about a semester in, I don't want to spend all weekend performing on a stage. I'd actually really like to have a family and enjoy. And not that you can't have both, of course, I know plenty of people that do, but it just didn't resonate with me anymore. And at a certain point, it kind of clicked that if I want something different, I have to do something different than what everybody else has done before me. And you're right. There is no right or wrong way. But if you want a different path to success or a different career, you got to be innovative and try new things. So I love that you're putting all of this together and that you're researching and you're informing yourself and combining all of it. Um, one other quick thing that I thought of while you were speaking was my own studio, when I'm teaching my students ahead of auditions, I always tell them that performance is 5% preparation and 95% belief because you have to believe in the preparation that you put in and you also believe in yourself. Otherwise, you're not going to have a great performance. It's not going to be a good day and you're not going to have fun doing it. What's the point if it just is a monotonous, boring process? So of course, practice and prepare and be ready. But then when you get there, you have to believe in yourself. And I wish I had figured that out earlier for myself and my performance and practice too. Me too. It's hard. I love that. I love that you do that with your students. I'm the same. Like I, I heard it from someone, but I really believe it. I think some people say singing is 70% mindset. Others say 80. I might even say 90. It's like, yeah. I mean, obviously technique is so important. You need technique, but I've been shocked with what I found. Like with my students, there was one time a girl who had been tone deaf, quote, tone deaf. I don't think she really was, but she was very, very, very pitchy. And I, I was too when I first started. So I get it. She was very off, like, Mary had a little lamb, like, like that. And that's yeah. not tone deaf. You know, tone deaf is like, yeah. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> like, she was very off. And I was like, huh. And I always like to think of it as like listening to the car engine, like, what is going on? And I'm like, okay, it's not her body, but it was, but then it kind of was. I'm like being a detective. And there was some kind of like shame I was sensing in her because also I was a life coach for a while and I was like, hmm. so like I was sensing some kind of weird shame. And I like, just, I'm like, can I just talk to you for a sec about, I don't know, just like anything. Tell me about your life, your family. She's like, oh, I have a twin brother. And oh my God, he's so perfect. And like, he's the golden mm. child. I'm the black sheep. And like, she starts telling the story. And I'm like, interesting. And she's like, yeah, my whole life, like he got good grades. I don't know. I always got F's. I'm like, did you want to get F's? She's like, no, I just felt like we need to be different. I don't know. She just kept doing this motion of the direction was this. Completely like pulling back. Huh. And she was holding back, but also her direction was backwards. And she kept doing this backwards motion. I was like, interesting. Cause actually to hit a note, you have to go forwards. And part of good posture in singing is the way your feet are positioned and your feet have to be like a tripod more mm. weight is in the front than in the back. And so to have good alignment and everything. And I was just watching, I'm like, no wonder she can't hit the note. All her, inf all her, everything is backwards and she's holding mm. her breath even because it's part of her identity. And so right. I was like, I forgot what I said, but it was some, doesn't, and these sessions don't have to be like a huge 30 minute talk. It could be just five minutes, but something clicked with her. And I just had her start pointing going, you, you and like, and like laughing. And I was like, don't you see that your energy is going backwards, but we want to go forwards. And I said something very simple. She was like, Oh my God, that's so funny. You, 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 ba, ba. and it was like, Oh my God. Ha. I was like, <laughs> and it was just like laughing. It was like, Holy crap. My whole life I've been, it's the energy of my life. Mm. And my very first teacher was a black belt karate instructor and opera singer. So like he was amazing. You didn't want to meet him in an alley, but also everything you did was metaphor. Everything that I understood in the mm. singing classroom was metaphor for life. So that's part of what I do too. It's like, don't you see the way you're approaching this? It's the way, the same way that you're having this problem in your life. Yeah. So, and even a lot of the times people can't hit the high note because there's something they're wanting to say. 
Mm. in their life that they're not saying. Sometimes it's like a thing they're just wanting to say. Like one girl the other day was like, she just wanted to say, leave me alone. Cause all these people mm. were bothering her and she was holding this thing in. And we had her say, I'm like, do it. And sometimes people will swear. They'll say, F you, F you. And they're giggling and they're like, they're good girls. Yeah. And they just want to say, F you. <laughs> and they say it like 10, 20, 50 times. Yeah. And then finally they can hit the high note because it's not stuck there anymore. Mm. So it's, it's yeah. that energy is so tight, especially when we're talking about, obviously with singing, it's your physical body, but any instrument that music and that creation that you're putting out, even if it is for an audience, it's for other people. It is so personal that if your personal energy isn't aligned, your performance won't be aligned either. It's true. It's true. Which is why I'm actually creating an online platform. I'm excited for students. We can talk about that later, but it's gonna be really affordable, like 30 bucks a month to have access to all oh, these videos, awesome. including the NLP exercises and meditations for mindset. Amazing. So that's that like awesome. So important. Okay. So let's go there now. So right now you're teaching full time. Um, and it sounds like teaching is the majority of your work. I know you have a lot of other things on your plate and things that you do. Give yeah. me a full picture of what a, an average day looks like for Claire right now. <laughs> uh, average day. Well, um, in general, if I didn't block off my calendar, I'm very, very lucky. I have a wait list and I have, um, many weeks blocked off and it's like, I'm in this transition where I want to move to Portugal and lots of things are changing and I'm creating this online membership. Normally it would be eight hours a day of teaching mm. and which is a lot. And like you have a break in between and I've learned, I'm learning to manage my energy, but I'm such, I'm such an introvert and an empath that it's like been an interesting challenge. I still struggle with it, keeping my energy to myself and not just, it's like being available to them and feeling it, but not leaking. So normally it'd be eight hours a day of that, but recently I'm just, I'm filming so much for the membership. So I've had to cut back on my availability and I'm creating it. And I would rather actually serve way more people through a membership because mm -hmm. singing lessons can be expensive. And, mm -hmm. you know, with the whole, where the world is right now with the recession and it's like, I'd rather just serve more people. So that's what my days are looking like at the moment is teaching I'd say half time and then filming full time. This is the last few weeks, but in general it's teaching full time, which is very lucky. Wow. And it's also like, it's a little too much for me. So I'm trying to, that's also <laughs> why I'm doing the membership. Cause it's, it's too much for me. Seven years of this is great, but I'm starting to yeah. get really tired of, it's just a lot of energy. It is, especially when you're talking about these really deep personal things with people on an ongoing basis, that emotional drain is exhausting. And like, okay, we're, we're both women. I think we also have even more emotional drain because people expect a higher degree of empathy for you. And then when you are empathetic and sympathetic, it just depletes you completely when you've got that all day. So it makes total sense. And all the passion in the world does not fix the fact that, you know, you only get eight hours of sleep, hopefully a night. <laughs> you can't recharge that fast. It is a lot. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's a um, lot. Balance this. Um, yes. It's a lot. So when you are, and you're looking forward towards the membership and this move, what is prompting the move? If you don't mind me asking, what has you excited about Portugal in particular? Well, um, I'm frankly just excited as some, as someone who just grew up with a family that traveled a lot. Cause my parents went to India and Pakistan and Afghanistan a lot. I love the world and I've lived in Indonesia for almost a year in Paris. And I've just been to a lot of countries and I miss it. And I speak, mm -hmm. I speak some of the languages and I just love it. And I, I think at the moment, well, my, my number one, my mom is moving there, um, before me cause oh, she wants to move there for retirement cool. with her husband. So oh, that's awesome. And the funny thing is the only reason why I moved to LA was to be closer to my family. So, <laughs> and the irony is it's become this big success, but I'm really just here with my family. Um, and so she's moving and my sister's never here anyway. Like she lives in LA, but she's gone all the time anyway. So I, I want to move to Portugal because my mom's moving there, but I'm like, why not? It sounds amazing. Yeah. The, the way of, it's just way cheaper. The quality of life I've heard is amazing. It's sunny. And it's just like, I'm ready for a new adventure and I'm ready. I'm ready to learn the language. I just, I just have a good feeling about it. I don't know why when my mom said it, something in me was like, there was a silence, you know, like when there's a lot of noise in your head and suddenly everything goes silent and, and you it just completely know. resonates with you and it feels right in your gut. Yep. I don't even know why, but it just feels right. And I, it's so random. So, oh, I, awesome. and I can, and with the membership, it's just weirdly like coming together in a synchronistic way of like, 
well, let's just pack up and go. And I'm literally going to leave most everything behind and put it in a, wow. in a little tiny container. I'll probably bring 20, you know, I'll just step actually really several boxes. I'm leaving all my furniture behind wow. and I'm just going to come with lots of suitcases and a giant, giant pellet box. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be awesome. Oh my goodness. Now, as you've, as you've built this and part of what gives you this freedom is that you have a phenomenal following on social media. And I'm assuming at this point, in addition to these industry connections and referrals that you're getting, a lot of your students probably do find you on social media, right? Yes. That's essential. Yes. That's essential that's awesome. actually. I would, so I would recommend that you, to your audience. Why did you start posting initially on Instagram and on TikTok? Um, because I heard it was what you were supposed to do. <laughs> Everyone's like, you should be doing that. I'm like, yeah, I should. <laughs> and so I did several years ago and I was clunky and nervous. And um, and then I realized, wow, I really should. Because that's where people would they'd be like, oh, I saw your video or hmm. some random people would just find it. And I was like, oh, this is easy. And it was really hard to find students otherwise. I mean, word of mouth now is big. Mm -hmm. which is great, but the beginning, no way. So word right. of mouth and social media, I think has contributed. So I was already working so hard. It's like, well, I might as well be working hard on broadcasting my stuff to the whole world instead of just to like a few people. Um, <laughs> and then I discovered TikTok last year and it's huge. My following yeah. on Instagram has pretty much stayed the same for years. And I don't even know if it's my sister's fans or whoever they are. Tech, I mean, they've, it's probably 50,000, but a lot of them are like, you know, probably 12 year old girls who are fans of my sister. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> but on TikTok, I grew last year to now by like, now I'm at like 113,000, which is wow. amazing. But really four months ago, I was at 50,000. So I doubled it three months ago wow. or four months ago to like 65,000 almost by just learning the right videos. So, and I have not really been on there a lot. So I've been doing my best but I'm not even giving it my full thing. So what I'm saying is <laughs> learn to do it properly. And um, I've learned that you just have to give a tiny bit of really high quality content under one minute, hopefully, and be really accessible and have a mixture of entertainment slash education. And yeah, it's awesome. It is. And your content, like I said before, I've always really enjoyed watching it. Not a vocalist myself, but I always really enjoy watching it because I feel like you do such a great job of breaking down that information. But I'm so curious, what is the type of content? Like, you know, you do like a lot of those vocal reactions and a lot of teaching videos. And I think even recently, I think I saw films of students in your studio and you were working with them live. What kind of content do you enjoy making the most? Ooh. Um, I would say, well, I haven't actually released this kind of content. I would say meditations and NLP stuff because mm. I love, I love being like, and imagine yourself. Like I love, I love the inner deep, gentle work. I actually, frankly, mm. I'm not really, I don't really enjoy the kind of, so do this. That's a little too masculine energy for me. So I'm doing it because it's kind of necessary, I think for my business, but I prefer the more gentle inner meditations and the way of transforming the way they think, which is way more feminine energy and gentle. So That's I haven't awesome. done that yet. So yeah, but I think I would prefer that. That's awesome. Yeah. Of the yeah. stuff that you put out right now, do you have a type of video that you feel is the easiest for you to put together? Is there something that like, you know, okay, you're, you've got 30 minutes right now. What are you going to open up your camera and film? Yeah. Um, well, sometimes like what I'll do is I'll scroll, especially on TikTok, I'll scroll people who are in my niche and I'll see what they're teaching. And I'm like, oh yeah, I know about that. I know about that. Cool. Oh, and I love the way she did that. So maybe I'll like, I'll see it like the way she entered. She's like, hi. And I'm noticing all the angles she's using. So I'll tag them or I'll save them. And then I'll, if I have 30 minutes to film, I'll look at the ones I've saved and say, okay, I could do a video like this, but with my own spin on it. Um, but probably the easiest would be finding vocal coach reacts videos. And I don't like the ones where people are just like, good job, good job. I'm like, I like to yeah. just be like adding. And this is what I kind of feel like I should start to do too. Cause people are always like, why is everyone so positive? I want to start being a little more honest with, oh my gosh, they did a great job here, but Ooh, right there. I wouldn't do that. Mm. I'm like, mm, cause that's what I would actually, I would watch something like that. But I'm like, yeah. I feel like I only do that with like famous people. I wouldn't do it to like some random person. Right. Um, but I feel like we all right. want to learn that they're all too positive right now. And like, good job. I love that. I love that. And it's like, 
I don't know why we all watch those videos because you don't really learn from them. So. <laughs> well, and it's hard because I think, I mean, you're, you're spot on that you want this like wonderful positive environment and you want to be encouraging everyone. And having that positivity is helpful. I also think that in your content, you do such a good job of making sure that positivity is constructive. It's not just like giving a bunch of thumbs up and like looking really happy, but you know, Claire does a great job of putting all these like boxes of text on the screen with more details about why and mechanically what's happening and where the, the placement of the voice is and having details like that. And I'm sure that's why you get a lot of followers. I'm sure that's why people want to work with you because you just show your knowledge in that way. But I think what's so cool about that too, is it's edifying other singers as well. And it's lifting up other people and other voices and showcasing that in addition to providing value to your, yeah. your potential students, which is so cool. Did you start with those types of videos initially? Was that one of the first things that you were filming? <laughs> I don't even remember what I did. It's been so long, but I know I remember doing, it'll be like, how to sing like a Disney princess. <laughs> it would be like with bad lighting. It would just be like with my student. It would be, I would do stuff with my students. I'd be like, um, okay. We would just be filming a random warm up. Like, okay. And now I'm going to have her do some squats. Oh, and she's now we're going to film her. I'm going to film myself coaching her on how to sing reflection from Mulan but it would just be like, it was so random. It wasn't like with the plan. It wasn't like, mm. I just think it's way better if you, I don't know, sometimes that off the handle, off the cuff, just coaching is good. But other times I tend to need more organization of like, okay, I'm going to teach this, this, and this. So it's become a little less random and a little more planned of like, I think <laughs> I want to teach. Otherwise it's just me <laughs> just doing my thing. And <laughs> I want to, I don't want to waste the person's time. And I want them to gain their trust that every second with me is going to count. And I think that's what I've Absolutely. also been respected for in the industry. I, to my own detriment, sometimes have felt, and I'm working with my own sense of worthiness, but almost like, oh my God, they're paying so much money to work with me. I have to make sure every second counts. Right. And like some of my students, their parents are scrubbing toilets to work with me. And like, mm. it's hard. And like, and honestly, the, you know, I'd say a very small percentage of them are kids who work with me just because they're a fan of my sisters, but, and the parent is just trying to make them happy. But I'm aware mm. of some of those students and I'm like, oh my God. And then I get stressed and it's like, you know what? They're going to learn what they do. And literally, usually 1% of what I teach is more than enough. If I used to try and give everything and they'd get overwhelmed. So realizing that um, I want to make every second count, but also I'm way more enough than I think I am. So you're way more enough. Trust that you, what you have to offer is way more enough. You don't need to constantly be showing your audience all these things of why you're worth it. Just give them one nugget and just trust that they're going to see. And over time, just keep doing that and be predictably there for them, you know, and present long-term, but you don't need to give so much because that sometimes that even backfires. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. It's hard to start. I think starting, especially on social media, but with every project, of course, starting is always the most difficult step. And yeah. there, I don't want to, you know, make, gigantic overgeneralizations, but I feel like social media today is way more important than it ever has been. More people are on it. The, the reach is much larger, especially with TikTok. It, the algorithm is just so unique <laughs> compared to everything that we've been used to with Instagram and Facebook and even Twitter that now you can just see anything at any time and you're getting recommended to people from all over the world. Um, I, I had a phone call yesterday with a man from Jamaica that had found us on TikTok. And it's wild to have those experiences. And at the same time, putting out that content then starts to feel like a lot of responsibility because so many people are seeing it. So it's hard to start and then it's hard to keep going. So in those moments where maybe you're not feeling as worthy or as confident, or you're, you know, you need to put something out on social media, but you just don't really feel like it today. How do you keep yourself motivated? What are the things that you're telling yourself internally to mm. keep that momentum going? Good question. Um, for I listen to a lot of life coaching podcasts or just inspiring people and they say this and now I say it. Um, <laughs> you are uh, an inspiring person. We will absolutely, absolutely <laughs> add you to that list. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Um, I say, let's see, when that happens, I just zoom, get, stop, don't spiral out and bleh, bring it just back to the person, bring it back to the audience. What am I serving to them? Like if you're, if, if in the audience, you're serving just one person, what can I give to them? And it's like, when I get nervous and I just doubt myself and blah, 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 in a way that's kind of selfish. Cause you're just thinking about how you're being viewed. 
I'm still reminding myself of that every day. I was nervous about this podcast. It's like, it's not about me. It's about the listeners. But it's like, (laughs) but really it's like, okay, stop it, Claire. Get out of your own way. Someone needs to hear this. Someone needs to hear this. 20 years ago, this was you. You needed to hear this. If if you were on this podcast or on this thing now, what would you need to hear? It's like, I'm going to say it. Maybe I'm afraid to say it, but someone needs to hear this. And maybe I'm afraid to be vulnerable and I want people to think I have this perfect life, but someone is, you know, is, a, is in trouble and they, they need to know that you're not perfect. It's like, okay. And like letting myself cry on a podcast or be vulnerable. It's like all that. Um, I would just bring it back to the person and serve from your heart. Cause when you're in your heart space, you're, you're a lot wiser. You're in your intuition. You just know when you're in your mind, you're in fear. So those are two different places and they'll get you two different results in different outcomes. So I would say get back to this place. That's awesome. Do you feel like a lot of that content that you're creating and the things that you're putting out, do you try to make sure that it resonates in that heart space before you hit publish every time? I do. I do. I mean, truthfully, sometimes I've just been pressed up against the wire and I'm like, oh, I need to produce something. And then it's like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, and I'm just too exhausted. I'm like, oh, wasn't that great? But oh, well. And then it, maybe it's, maybe I don't think it's great and it goes viral. Right. Or, <laughs> yeah, I think it's amazing and no one likes it. But um, yes, um, I I do try. I do try. I I try to have a mixture between it's, 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 it's a balance. I'm still trying to figure out how to serve all these different people who are visual auditorial and like how they learn differently and all the different types of people who might be watching. And sometimes I'm just like, you know what? I should just do it from my perspective and people will either mm-hmm. come or they'll go. I'm in that place right now. So I do my best, but I try and keep different types of learners in mind as I do it too. If someone was starting right now, yeah. they're listening to everything that you're saying. They're like, okay, that's it. I'm going to start posting. <laughs> I finally <laughs> feel inspired. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. What kind of advice would you pass on to them as they are mm-hmm. starting their journey on social media and trying to promote their teaching, their music, whatever they're working on? Um, I would first study, like make it part of your job, literally 20 minutes a day, even just 20. I did that with TikTok. Study the way that your competitors or people in your niche are doing it. And look at people who are successful. Don't just, you know, look at not just some random person. It's like someone who is really doing what you want to be doing. And there's different people and they'll be teaching it in different ways. Notice and take note. And of course you want to make it your own. You don't want to copy, but um, I would start doing that. And I wouldn't just start posting. I, I just start posting randomly before I knew what I was doing, which, you know, it landed me somewhere, but it, I would have probably done, if I could do it over, I would, I would start by studying others and instead of reinventing the wheel. So don't reinvent the wheel, do what is working. Don't try and be all like, I'll do it myself. Like, no, you're already a business owner. That's a lot. It's already hard enough to do that. Just do what works and you'll just grow through time. And, and when you just, they say this in business too, and auditions too, your first 50 to hundred auditions suck. So like be prepared. It's like, just woohoo. Your first 50 posts might suck. Just be like, cool. Yeah. I got number 10 out of the way. Only 40 more to go. Of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> woohoo. <laughs> it's always surprising too, the, the content that does really well. Like you said, sometimes it's the things that you just like you know, of course you felt good about it, but you just kind of flippantly put it together or it was something yeah. that you thought, I don't even know if anyone's going to want it hear this, but it's something I'm passionate about or I'm excited about. And yeah. then it just goes bonkers, which is always so exciting. Yeah. And just starting is, is difficult, but you don't have to have a massive following to start getting students or to start getting business coming in either. No, you actually only need, they say you only need about a thousand raving fans to have like a membership channel, for instance, or even just a hundred people. So stay true to yourself. Don't become this idea caricature of who you think they want you to be. Cause mm. it's going to take a lot longer to unravel that. I'm kind of in the midst of doing that right now, <laughs> even though I'm successful, it's, it's actually a little more painful. Cause I feel like more people mm. are going to be like, why are you changing? <laughs> um, yeah, that makes but sense. I would start with authenticity, but just kind of blow yourself up a little more. Like it's you, but just a little heightened mm. and st- Stay true to, you know, what's, what Seth, Seth Godin, the thought leader always talks about people don't have people be lukewarm about you. They should either, they should be polarized. They either are in your mm. camp and they're raving fans or they hate you and they want nothing to do with you. And that's like perfect. And we're often like, I don't want that. I want to be lukewarm and have everyone sort of feel meh about me. And, and I, you know, I did that for many years, but I'm trying more and more to be polarizing. Like, look, you like me or you don't. 
And when, and people will come in fast. Mm -hmm. The irony is when you have a niche and you are who you are, people won't come and they will at the same time. So, um, I recommend that too. Well, and when you're creating authentically and when you're displaying your teaching and your skill and your knowledge authentically, then when students come to a lesson with you, they know exactly what they're getting. Like, that's why they're excited to work with you is that you've got this personal brand. You've got this wonderful smiling face all over your Instagram and your TikTok and that warmth and that excitement around what you're doing is why someone's going to work with Claire versus insert any number of other voice instructors and voice coaches on Instagram and TikTok. I mean, it's hard in the fact that you have a lot of competition, but also there isn't really competition. The weird thing we say is all the time. Yeah. yeah. We say all the time, like there's an ideal student for every teacher and there's also an ideal teacher for every student. And so why someone's picking you versus the next person is going to be wildly different depending on that individual as well. So just being yourself makes an enormous difference in that. It really does. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I agree. What um, you, I was gonna say, what have you enjoyed most about this journey as you've been growing on social media? Um, the social media journey. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. I've enjoyed. <laughs> um, I've enjoyed just seeing how many people were impacted by what I was like. Oh, that was just mm-hmm. a simple video. Like how many people were just impacted with like, Oh, or it's like, you were moved by that. Like that moved you. Like, <laughs> it's just like so funny. Like, Oh, it's like, Oh my God, it's been changing my life. I'm like, really? Like, you know, I think we just underestimate our own power and just the power mm-hmm. of being a human with something to say. And then the more and more of a following you have, the more people are like, Oh my God, you changed my life. And it's like, really? And sometimes I think, you know, who knows, maybe they say it because they just, it feels good to say that. But other times I think they really mean it. And it's, it just, it feels really good. So, and it, you know, it's good to hear that. And, um, I love that I can have impact on a mass scale with, yeah. And the thing is, if you become really good at your niche, like on TikTok, there's like six, five, six, seven people of vocal coaches that pop up when you look, I'm now one of them, which is so cool. And it's like, whoa, like how did that happen? But you can, you will become that the more you, you are, the more general you are, no, I find that the more niche and you, because there only is one you, you get, the more it will just psh, 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 just spiral up. So I think it's also taught me to be just more courageous and bold and be me on a bigger level, which is scary, but also exciting. So That's mm-hmm. awesome. That is mm-hmm. fantastic. I'm sure that translates not only into your teaching, but all of your other projects that you're working on too. Like you find that confidence in your social media and then you go to perform or you go to share something else and it's easier to be yourself and all of that. It is because you've, you've faced so many hurdles and like scary moments of some troll commenting and you're like, oh, I survived that comment. <laughs> and it's like, it's not true. <laughs> it's like, you know, so or some singing teacher from the middle of nowhere. It was just like, you don't know anything you're saying. And it's like, Oh my God, I don't. And it's like, wait a minute. We're all just different. We have differing opinions. She can have her opinion and I'm not making anyone wrong. It's like, okay. Or she's having a bad day. You know what I mean? So it's like, Mm -hmm. yeah, makes you stronger. Did did the fear of those types of comments ever hold you back from posting on socials? Yes. I mean, I think what I had to do, I mean, it didn't exactly, it would have, had I not, I created like an alter ego, basically just like Sasha Fierce. I kind of feel like a lot of us do. And I I really do because I'm like such an introvert. No one would guess, but it's like, I actually do kind of have an alter ego when I post, which is still me, but it's, it's someone who there's almost like a bulletproof vest I wear, Mm. which in a way, I mean, it's something I'm trying to still get. I would like to be a little more vulnerable there because I am truthfully afraid of the comments sometimes because it's, you know, they hurt. And so I'm still working on that. Um, It didn't stop me in the past because I would just go put on the vest but I wouldn't say that that's accomplishing anything. I would just say that I just kind of bulldoze through it. So I am working on it with you. <laughs> yeah, It is a challenge. And yeah. the, the things that people can pick on can be so minute oh. and like so devastating in the same way. Like they just get so picky sometimes. I had someone say that I talk fast. I know I talk fast. There's a lot going on in my head, <laughs> but it wasn't like, you know, like, oh gosh, she talks really fast. It was like, a lot meaner and had a lot more swear words in it than that. And at the same time, like, it's one of those where I look back on it and I'm like, okay, but I do like, that's actually really funny. Like I do talk (laughs) fast. Um, and it's because there's so much going on in my brain that I want to get out that half the time I'm talking over myself, trying to accomplish that. 
Yeah. And at the same time, like seeing that comment, sometimes it brings awareness. And then also sometimes you see things that are just, just flat out mean and it does hurt. It really does. But it does. there's growth in that. It kind of, it's like tolerance. Like you start with a little tiny saucer and over time, instead of it bottoming out every time, now it's a salad bowl and we're like skimming off the top. Like, oh, that's stung, but I'm going to with my day now. It's true. And my sister was in some interview the other day and she's trying to, of course, get to her next level. And Mm -hmm. she said, and she's LGBT. And so she's, she made some comment about, you know, males as like a joke. Cause like, you know, she would never really mean that, but some, it somehow landed on Fox news and like, and now all these people are saying horrible things about like some of the worst, Mm -hmm. most horrible, like even violent graphic things when she made like a little tiny joke. And like, it's, if you, I mean, in my brain, if you had a brain, you would know it was just a joke. (laughs) And like, and I'm like, really people taking everything so literally. So like, I don't know. I feel like it teaches you that like in this world, some people are literally looking to be upset and to hate because hating and judging is actually an armor. It's a protection for us to not feel our own pain. Mm -hmm. And so lots of people we're all, I mean, we're all in pain, but a lot of people, they're in pain and they use hate. And so no matter what you do, they're like trying to find something to hate about you. And it's like, mm. really? That? And they're like enraged. And the more expressed yeah. you are, the more enraged they get. So in a way, it's like, mm-hmm. cool. And I told my sister, I'm like, woohoo, you landed on Fox News. <laughs> Good job. You enraged them. It's like, oh, well. Oh, exposure's well. exposure. Exposure's <laughs> exposure. We'll take it. <laughs> it's just how you view it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that that happened. And I know that this is something I'm sure that your, your sister deals with a lot, but even in this, this bubble of like voice teaching, which just seems like such an innocent <laughs> topic to begin with, there can still be this. Um, so I guess the, the reason I'm kind of uh, staying on this topic for a second is a, because don't let this hold you back from posting. If anyone's listening to this and thinking, I do want to start, but I'm nervous or I'm scared of what happens if I get a negative comment. Um, you're always completely within your right to just block and delete. <laughs> it's totally fine to just move on with your life like that. You are. Um, but at the same time too, like this does happen. It's normal. And if you are maybe one of those people that as another voice instructor or as a music teacher, if you're consuming content like this, when you see something you don't agree with, just put yourself in that creator's shoes before you start jumping on that. Cause it's not a great way to build a following. If you're just arguing about pedagogical details, like there can always be a discussion and a conversation around things, but assumption and attacks are obviously not what we're looking for. (laughs) That's not a great way to go about things. So I think we all have to help each other in that, that, you know, that other voice teacher commenting on something that you posted, just use that energy and time to putting, you know, towards putting out content on that point instead. And I think it's a lot more beneficial for everyone involved. I do too. And like, I doubt any of your listeners would do that, but I mean, it can be a very human instinct to decide to drag someone down that you're competing with and Mm -hmm. show everyone in the comments that they don't know what they're doing, but you're right. It makes them look bad. So I think instead to be curious, like, huh, that's interesting. And like, Mm. just keep that curiosity. I mean, my my mom taught that. Yeah. Keep keeping that curiosity open. Absolutely. uh, I agree. And also if you ever get the more and more successful you get, you might get DMS of people, I don't know, with weird stuff, you can block them or they might even be threatening, you know, if you don't give them something they want, Something's going to happen. Lock them. Yeah. You don't owe anything to anyone. Yep. Yeah, those weird, the, the messages do get weird. I will say that. <laughs> I knew it had that large of a following and the messages got really weird really fast. So They're, they do, but they, and they will, <sighs> they will because the world is weird sometimes, but yep. that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So we've got the membership coming up, which I'm super excited to hear about. Tell me more. What is this going to look like? Who are you kind of aiming this towards? What's the plan? So, um, well, so, so this year I've decided to create a way for thousands of singers around the world to learn, you know, top industry techniques right from their own homes, which I'm so excited about. And it's going to be this monthly online membership. Um, it's going to be launching mid-March and you'll be able to learn the same proven, te- you know, strategies that I teach my students on TV shows and on Broadway. It's going to have, you know, hours of recorded video training and vocal exercises and a, pri- um, a private Facebook group that you can interact with and share your singing with and, um, you know, with your fellow members in a very safe, supportive community. And it's going to be for as little as twenty nine ninety nine a month, which I'm so excited for. Um, yeah, especially because of, you know, 
the, you know, the recession and everything. So you'll have also have the option to participate in a monthly one hour community Zoom call where we'll have, you know, you'll have the chance to work with me one on one in front of the whole community that's watching and we'll do live Q and A's. Um, and the, the, um, a lot of my students have been loving that NLP neuro linguistic programming mm. mindset strategies, and those will be in the membership too. So, so exciting. So it I'm seems so like excited. the, the perfect blend of everything that you're excited about and passionate about finally in one place. <laughs> <I'm so excited. laughs> oh, that's awesome. How long has this been an idea that you've tossed around a couple of years? Cause one thing I recommend to um, your listeners that I would have loved to know is always be listening to what people are asking for. For years, people are like, oh, I wish I just can't afford most singing lessons. I wish there was like a course you could make or a membership. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. And then one day I'm like, Eureka, that's a good idea. <laughs> my big friend's like, you should. I'm like, yeah, I should. Because yeah, I mean, so many people around the world with currency too, they can't. And so be listening to what people are asking for. They're like, I wish you could teach this, this, and this. I'm like, cool, taking notes, taking notes. And now I'm giving it to them. And it's serving them and it's just going to be great. And it feels very good. And ironically, I'm going to work less and it's going to be serving more people. And it's just always be listening to the breadcrumbs of the universe. The universe is throwing at you because I was getting those clues from day one. Um, and now I'm following it. So, um, yeah. That's awesome. And something too, that I think in general, at musicians and creatives, we aren't great at like we're so focused on our craft <laughs> and where our passion is that we miss a lot of those doors and those opportunities so just being yeah. aware of that and listening not only to what people are yeah. asking for but what other people in your in your circle are working on can always be so yeah. helpful because you never know when there's an opportunity for collaboration or you, something can come of that relationship or that connection too yeah i also think it's so important as artists and as people um uh, in the industry who are like you have a business that we really put the business side first because you can actually serve more people when you're mm -hmm. not starving. Like I've met amazing teachers who were so good, but they charged so little and they were like living on pennies and they mm -hmm. couldn't become good teachers versus feed yourself first, pay yourself first, have a well, have everything taken care of. And you actually, you deserve way more than you think per hour and solve the business piece first. And then it will allow you to serve your audience tenfold even if at first you're like, oh, but I don't know, I don't want to charge that. It's like, learn money mindsets. I would read the book, um, How to Be a Badass or be, You Are a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. Yep. Love her. Like, that's really important because I, I know too many artists who are very good at the craft, but they're not good at business. And that's just a stereotype we want to break because it mm -hmm. does not have to be that way. And um, I've really proved to myself with starting off broke and in debt. I've broken out of that big time and you can too. So that is fantastic. And it's something that we have to hear more. We have to say more. <laughs> we have to elevate for everyone because there is absolutely money in the arts. If there wasn't money in the arts, we wouldn't have, you know, we, we all just watched the Grammys like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And it was <laughs> mind blowingly beautiful and this incredible yeah. visual show and, you know, amazing, um, you know, costume design for the the show and the set design and then amazing outfits and gowns. It, it, everything is just insanely wonderful and beautiful. And at the same time, like those are also just musicians. <laughs> like why are there musicians that are toiling away in silence and in, in lack when there's also that degree of success available to us? And I'm not saying that everyone wants to be that level of artist and that's not what we're looking for. But at the same time, there is opportunity. There is money. People value the arts. They value the culture that comes with music and theater and performing. And you absolutely have those doors open to you too. If you're doing it authentically to yourself and making sure everyone actually knows what you're doing, <laughs> you have yeah. to be vocal about it or they can't buy from you for sure. Totally. What I would do is, I mean, it's harsh to say, but your rate is in conjunction with, with what you think you're worth, but also the degree to which you're giving back. And at, when I first heard this, I was like, what? Because I know people who are amazing people and they work so mm -hmm. hard and they don't make much money. But in a way it's like, all right, to be blunt, like if you're working at McDonald's, how long does it take to train for that job? An hour versus this, it's like, takes like 12 years or a whatever lifetime. it is. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, if <laughs> yeah. you want that kind, you have to make sure that the, the kind of value you're bringing is huge. And at first I was not bringing that kind of value. So in a way I did not deserve mm -hmm. what I am being paid now and what I will keep even growing into, and you can too. So maybe, may, and maybe be honest with yourself. Maybe you are deserving whatever per hour you're getting. If you want more, bring more to the table, hmm. bring more. 
And so I decided to bring more and I brought so much. And I actually believe I'm worth at least an extra hundred hour more, more now. And it's, it's with, it's because I'm able to change people's voices fast, but I have, I have looked and like, how can I be adding value? And I'm always looking mm. like a, like a pig sniffing for truffles. Like, I'm like, what can I be doing? And cause I want to, I love to give, but also, I mean, some part of me as well, um, is still a little in that hypervigilance of like, I never want to be poor again. Mm. And so like, I always am like, I'm taking care of myself business wise. Cause you know, I will give people the shirt off my back and just do everything for free. But I'm like, nope, I have to also maintain this beautiful business part of me that, that, and a beautiful, and a money coach once said to me, it's like, you don't have, and it's like, I, instead of me going, oh, well, they can't afford it. They're scrubbing toilets to work with me. Nope. They can actually rise. If you empower them, they can actually rise to the occasion. And if it really means that much to work with you, they will find a way and that will empower mm -hmm. them. You are actually not empowering them by just giving them a lesser, you're keeping them small. And it's like, oh my God, but it's true. And so I hold that space for them to rise into as well. So as you raise your rates and become more valuable, always expect that from, from your clients as well. They are powerful to rise to that next occasion to be able to pay you that kind of money. So it's empowering for both of you. Money Absolutely. is an energy and it's important. Well, and it's not something that is an overnight change ever. It's something that I think we all struggle with. And it, it doesn't even just come. Um, there's a, a great book called Secrets of a Billionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker that talks a lot about the modeling that you have and what you're raised with and what you see and how that translates into your life. We're all dealing with our own individual influences in that mindset. And so a lot of the musicians that I talk to when we talk about teaching rates, they're vastly undercharging. And when we talk about the rates that they should be charging, it's scary. And it's scary because we've never explored that self-worth. We've never explored that confidence. I mean, maybe we're confident on stage, but then we get off and <laughs> we start to pick ourselves apart and we don't, we don't find that, that value in our own selves. So yeah. everything that you're saying today, Claire, in, in the mindset and the confidence and finding those um, long-term solutions and long-term comfort with what you're working on, it's so important, not only for your, your performing, but also living a lifestyle as a creative and, and making an income in this field because it's a lot of work, but it's absolutely worth it on the other end for sure. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> oh, it is. This has been all your, all your passion. <laughs> it, yes. This has been so much fun. I have really, truly enjoyed finally getting to meet you face to face and talking with you about your journey and what this has looked like for you. Um, I really want to say thank you for sharing candidly how we got to this point, but also talking a lot more about your content creation because it's something that I think in some ways can be a little gate kept because it's just newer and we're all trying to figure out how to articulate what we're working on and what projects we're doing and what works and what doesn't. So thank you for being open and sharing and giving so much advice today. This has been wonderful. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. A great opportunity for me to speak on a podcast because I get nervous too. <laughs> so it was good practice for me. <laughs> <laughs> I still get nervous every single one of these episodes. So don't worry. <laughs> I, go way, I get nervous every single time I post a video. So I don't know if that ever goes away. <laughs> uh, and if it's okay if it doesn't, honestly, I think the... Yeah. Have you ever read um, Everything is Figure Outable by Marie Forleo? I'm reading it right now on my okay. Audible. Oh, it's one of my I favorite love her books. So much. I, I knew incredible. we got along for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> she has this part, and if I, maybe you've gotten to it already. I think it's pretty early in the book where she talks about fear and excitement being this little person inside of you, like jumping up and down, and yeah. you have to decide which one in each moment it is. Like, are they jumping up and down out of fear? Are they jumping up and down out of excitement? It feels the same, but you have to assess it every time. And I think a lot of times those nerves. Like that is your superpower. If you can harness that nervous energy um, to be prepared, to be excited, to be present in that moment, then you absolutely get better results than thinking it's fear and allowing the, the fear part of that to creep in and kind of take over or talk you out of things. So when you're posting, it's excitement. <laughs> it is excitement. <laughs> Awesome. Seriously, Claire, this has been so much fun. I really appreciate it. I hope everyone that was listening got I mean, even 10% of the value that I got out of our conversation today. It's been a ton of fun. So I really do Thank appreciate so it. Thank you guys. Thank you so much.